Welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, we're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. Hello, everyone. This is not your host, Ed. Um, He has been working some very unusual schedules this week, and so this is Cheryl taking over to make sure that you get your regular dose of Geek Homeworld. This week, of course, we have all been saddened by and upset by the November 13th terrorist attacks in Paris. I am recording on the 14th, and so there probably have been a lot of developments between the recording of this and you listening to this. I was able to catch a quick lunch with Ed today, and he was saying that after 9-11, this was the worst that he had ever felt. And of course, we've had attacks in other places, in London and in Spain. And, you know, I think that we have to keep on going. You know, he wondered if we should even record an episode this week especially since France is our top audience outside of the United States. In fact, we have more listeners in France than we do in our home state of Georgia. But, you know, earlier this year, we experienced the attacks on Charlie Hebdo in France. And and I think that we should follow in their footsteps and, and continue on with doing what we do. Because, as they say, if we let the terrorists change the way that we live our lives, then they've won. So hopefully this will be an episode that you can still enjoy uh, despite everything. And of course, um, as of today, you know, a lot of people are turning their social media profiles into the French flag. And, you know, I encourage you to do all of that in support of the, the people of Paris and the people of France and indeed all of us who are feeling their distress at this time. So I thought I would spend some time today talking about our listeners in France and uh, did a little bit of research. As you all know, I'm a a huge research nerd. So I spent some time looking into the state of geek culture in France and uh, was really excited to learn some things, which forgive me, please, I, I really didn't know a lot of these things. So um, I learned, for instance, that, uh, you know, the geek culture in France is extremely strong. And I guess that explains why we have a lot of listeners there. Uh, the, the, or a lot of French geeks who enjoy sci-fi and enjoy tech apparently really enjoy cosplay. I've even read in some places enjoy cosplay more than Americans. So there's a challenge to you Americans try to out cosplay the French. I was also really excited to see that although there have been a lot of different kinds of pop culture conventions all over France that actually the French just had their very first Comic-Con in Paris a couple of weeks ago, the weekend of October 23rd through the 25th. Um, They had there as one of their major guests, Frank Miller, who of course is a writer and comic book artist, um, was probably best known also as a director and uh, known for his work with the Dark Knight series with Daredevil and 300 and Sin City. And I think one of the things that's most remarkable about him is that he has worked with both, well, not just with DC and with Marvel, but also with Dark Horse. So he has had an influence across all of the comic book world and and, uh, bringing those things both to book and to screen. Uh, Also at Paris Comic Con, they had Macy Williams, who plays Arya Stark on Game of Thrones. And we are certainly looking forward to the next season of Game of Thrones. And it still feels like it is decades and decades and decades of waiting ahead of us. Um, Arya is one of our favorite characters. Of course, Tyrion is probably our favorite character, but Arya is awesome. And then they also had uh, Sean Ashmore who is probably best known for portraying Iceman in the recent X-Men movies. And, of course, that's just a little bit of of what they had in terms of of, uh, well-known guests who were there. 
And then they had another thing which I found really exciting, and uh, they called it Action. They had the Action Academy, and this was targeted towards young people. I think the age range was 15 to 34, and it was for people who are interested in creating their own videos and putting things online so they could come there and they could ask questions of the experts who were there to assist them. So, you know, I always like that as aspect of conventions, not just, you know, yeah, it's great to go and see screenings and it's great to go and meet people and get autographs and buy stuff and dress up if you're into that. But it also really excites me when there are things that you can build your own experiences around. So, you know, whether that's learning how to use crowdsourcing and crowdfunding or learning how to make videos and develop your own comic books, develop your own films. That is a place where you can come together with people who are like-minded and who have the same sort of interest in the world and really build the things that you want to do. So I, I was very excited to see that aspect of the Paris Comic Con. The other thing that I learned about geeks in France and maybe French people in general, I don't know, uh, there seems to be a really strong uh, affection for graphic novels there. And in fact, there is even a free comic book day in France now. So one day of the year where you can get free books and, you know, who who can argue about that? That's a fantastic thing to have happen. And I discovered, and please forgive me for not having discovered this before, but there is a character called Asterix. And maybe all of our listeners have heard about Asterix, but this is a new treasure for me. Um, Asterix first appeared in a comic and magazine back in 1959, and then from there was developed into a full-fledged series of its own uh, since 1961, so more than 50 years now. They've published 36 volumes, and it takes place back during the roaming occupation of France, which at that time was called Gaul, and um, interestingly enough, Ed and I just went to see last weekend a production of Julius Caesar, and of course Julius Caesar was uh, the Roman general who was responsible for the Roman legions in Gaul, and so uh, this is set in a little village where they have managed to resist the Romans. And the hero is named Asterisk. And the humor in the comic is very punny, I like to say. So it's full of word puns. It's full of um, kind of insider jokes and things. And so, again, having just seen the play Julius Caesar, I was really amused when I heard in the film, the animated film, 12 Tasks of Asterisks, that Julius Caesar says to Brutus, stop playing with your knife. Somebody might get hurt. <laughs> so, of course, you know, Brutus is the uh, the one who dealt the final death blow to, to Julius Caesar in real life and, you know, in adaptations of Julius Caesar's life. So there have been now just tons of films based on the Asterisk uh, comic book series and they've been animated and they've also been live action films you can see most maybe all of the uh, animated films at least on YouTube uh, I've been watching some today and so I recommend if you've not seen them or if you want to uh, go back and find something that's just joyful and just fun and funny you know let's lighten the mood a little bit maybe and let's let's uh, let's reflect on this great part of French culture and French geek culture in particular, and let's celebrate that a little bit. So um, go and check out those videos on YouTube and and have a little fun. And uh, in in the series of books and the series of films now, Asterisk, who is the hero in the village, has been involved in all kinds of things. Uh, he's gone and helped build the pyramids. He's been around with Cleopatra and the Vikings. He has even conquered America in one film. And of course, you know, because you've got to bring some science fiction in there too. He's uh, He's gone to Atlantis. He's dealt with aliens. So this guy has really gotten around and some of the, the big name actors in France uh, have been 
involved with the Asterix series. And in fact, a couple of the films are even on the top 10, I mean, sorry, the top 100 French language films of all time. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome that you can get a couple of, of films based on comic books among some of the top French films, because of course, you know, a lot of the French films that are, that are most popular are, are far more serious than that, but these are just good fun. And so for instance, in 2002, in the film Asterisks and Obelix Mission Cleopatra, uh, Christian Clavier and Ger- Gerard Depardieu are the heroes, and Monica Bellucci is Cleopatra. And in fact, in uh, a lot of the live action films, Gerard Depardieu is in there as uh, the character, I think, Obelix. And then in 2007, Gerard is back again in the film Asterix at the Olympic Games, um, and Alain Delon. Alan Delon, I'm sorry, my French accent is terrible. Alan Delon <laughs> is uh, Julius Caesar. And uh, unfortunately, that film wasn't as popular as some of the others. Uh, it really uh, didn't go over very well. And in fact, it earned the uh, French version of what we call the Razzies here in the States. And that is the Gerard de, de Cinema. And I'm assuming that the, that the award itself is named after Gerard de Perdue. Um, so that's unfortunate, but it didn't stop them from making more Asterix films and, and even another live action film a couple years ago, 2012 Asterix and Obelix in God Save Britannia. And in that one, Catherine Deneuve of all people is in it and she plays the queen of England. And then last year they had the first Asterix movie to be animated in 3d. This one was called Asterix, Asterix, the land of the gods. And it received the IFCMA nomination uh, for best original score for an animated feature film. So we go from a Razzie in 2007 to uh, an award nomination in 2014. But, you know, the thing about the Asterix character in the series is it goes way beyond the books and the films. It is a huge part, apparently, of uh, French culture in general. A lot of merchandising around it. There are board games, and of course there are video games. And I was excited because I am a theme park geek as well to learn that there is an Asterix theme park uh, outside of Paris. Uh, not too far, I think, from where Disneyland Paris is. So you can uh, maybe make a trip and see both of those uh, great parks together. And the other thing is it's it's so hugely popular that Asterix has been translated, the books and all have been translated into more than 100 languages, including ancient Greek, because... You know, why not? <laughs> translated into ancient Greek. I didn't see if it had been translated into Klingon or Romulan yet, but I'm sure that is probably coming. Um, so, you know, and the other thing is it has continued to be really plugged in to, uh, into what's going on in France. And so, for instance, back at the beginning of this year when there were the terrorist attacks at Charlie Hebdo, uh, one of the the artists, the creator Albert Uderzo, uh, came out of retirement specifically to draw two Asterix uh, uh, cartoons honoring the memories of the victims at Charlie Hebdo. And so I think we can see how, with that, geek culture supports the overall culture and supports the culture of you know all all of us in Europe and America and. Uh, Japan and Australia and, you know, all these places where we believe in freedom and we believe in liberty and uh, for our French brothers in brotherhood as well. So please, if you haven't already done it, um, make some sort of tribute to the French people and show your support for them over the coming days as, as they continue to, to deal with all of this. And let us all pray for peace as always. But let us also continue to remember who we are and the things we love because, you know, we can't let them take that away from us. So hang in there and we'll be praying for you. Geek. Homeworld. Review. Preview. Let's take a quick run through the upcoming holiday film 
season. No, I'm not going to talk about holiday films themselves necessarily, uh, but just what's coming out in the holiday releases. And that season starts a little bit early here in the States with our Thanksgiving weekend. And we have coming up uh, just before that on November 20th, the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, which is the final in the series. I'm sure that is going to be tremendous. And you have Jennifer Lawrence, of course, returning as the lead character of Katniss. You've got Donald Sutherland and Liam Hemsworth. And then you also, I'm excited to see uh, Gwendolyn Christie, who is Brienne of Tarth on Game of Thrones. Did I mention that I'm a big Game of Thrones fan? So um, I'm always glad to see uh, Gwendolyn Christie doing something. Also that week, we have The Night Before. And this is a, a funny film starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Seth Rogen and Anthony Mackie. And it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope that the trailers aren't all of the funny. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. The, uh, of course, Joseph Gordon Levitt has already had one hit this year with the film, the walk, which, uh, in which he plays the true story of a Frenchman named Philippe Petit, who walked a high wire between the two towers of the world trade center and that film was actually dedicated to the, the victims of that terrorist attack, uh, and it generated a lot of interest, that film. Then coming up November 25th, which is a Wednesday, an unusual release day, but the Thanksgiving holiday here in the States is Thursday, so they're coming out a little bit early that week. And we're going to see Creed, which is a continuation of the Rocky series. So Sylvester Stallone is there. He is returning, and he is going to be training the son of his old opponent, uh, Apollo Creed. So the son uh, is Adonis, and he's being played by Michael B. Jordan. I think that it looks like it's going to be a good film, and people are really excited about that and seeing uh, the reprisal of a very popular character in Rocky and seeing what the story of Creed's son is. And then we also have coming out that weekend a film that I'm very excited about. And if you've been listening to the podcast, you already know this. In fact, our most popular episode so far was Frank and Geek, which is inspired by the release of the upcoming film Victor Frankenstein, which stars James McAvoy and your friend Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe. I am super excited about that. I may be more excited about that than the other big December release, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but if you want to know more about Frankenstein in general, go check out the Franken Geek episode and uh, you'll learn a lot more about that topic. Then early in December, there aren't really a lot of major releases. Um, nothing much coming out until December 11th. There is one film coming out that, Ed and I are both excited about The Heart of the Sea, which is starring Chris Hemsworth. And this is inspired by the true story of a whaling ship. And what happened with this whaling ship back in the early 1800s is what inspired the novelist Herman Melville to write Moby Dick. So it's kind of like going back further in the source material uh, to create this new film. And it looks like it's going to be great. Um, it's directed by Ron Howard, and you can usually rely on him to give you great films. I mean, he's done Cocoon and Willow, Backdraft, Apollo 13, The Da Vinci Code. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. So definitely uh, will be at the theater December 11th for The Heart of the Sea. Then coming up on December 18th is what Ed would call a little art house film that you may not have heard of um, entitled Star Wars, The Force Awakens. And of course, uh, we're very excited about that. We've been looking forward to it for years. Well, for years, even before it was announced that it was going to be made, probably since 1977 when the first film came out. But um, Ed has admitted that he's feeling a little bit nervous. He has what he calls episode one syndrome, where he was so super excited about the film, uh, was one of the first people in line to see it. I think he even was in the local newspaper interviewed because of that. And then, mm, as you know, episode one didn't exactly live up to everyone's expectations. But I think we're going to have a good film here. I think it's going to be really a, a wonderful picture. And uh, I can't wait for that to come out. Then on Christmas Day itself, December 25th, there are several uh, interesting releases coming out. 
One that is on the do not recommend list is the new uh, rendition of Point Break, which was a great Patrick Swayze film back in the 80s, uh, Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves. And now it's being reprised. But uh, so far, the critics are saying, you know what? Just go and uh, take a look at the original film and skip this one. Uh, there's also a film coming out, a new Will, F- Will Ferrell film, which is partnered with Mark Wahlberg. It's called Daddy's Home, and it's being billed on the poster as Stepdad versus Dad. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I really enjoy Mark Wahlberg as a comic actor, and so that's why uh, I'm talking about this film. I think it's going to be fun, and, and you should go check it out. But, you know, Will Ferrell, sometimes he's got fantastic films. I really loved his last one, uh, Get Hard, which was fantastically funny. But sometimes I don't enjoy his films so much. But having Mark Wahlberg in there might help, even if the film isn't fantastic. Uh, And it looks like I'm probably going to be spending the whole day on Christmas at the movie theater because there's another fantastic film coming out, the new Will Smith film, which is called Concussion, and it is based on the true story of the doctor who discovered how dangerous American football can be, all these uh, these guys knocking their heads together, and they develop these really serious degenerative uh, brain conditions because of it, and it looks like it's going to be a terrific, dramatic film. I love Will Smith as an action-adventure star. I loved him in comedic films. I loved him back during Fresh Prince. And, of course, I'm old enough to remember his career as an early rapper in the 80s, and parents just don't understand. But I really also love him as a dramatic actor. I mean, you can't beat things like The Pursuit of Happiness and I Am Legend. And that's the level of performance that I'm expecting from Concussion. So I will see you all at the movie theaters on December 25th. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Geek Homeworld Podcast with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google+, Plus. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, listen to us on iTunes, see us on YouTube, be part of our Mixler chats. Thank you. See you again on the Geek Home World Podcast.